hello, welcome to Star Wars Belt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today we've got a returning guest, uh, someone who was on a few months ago when we sort of didn't know stacks about the last uh, the last Jedi, the rise of Skywalker and where <laughs> we're heading. I've already mucked it up already. She's already laughing at me. And um, she's here to give me a little bit of insight onto things that I have no idea about. So from uh, Rebel Dispatch, it's Holly. How are you going? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me on again. Oh, no worries. My pleasure. My pl- absolute pleasure to come on. Now, uh, just to put a little time stamp on this, about two hours ago, would you say Disney Plus was unleashed onto yep. the world? In the, Well, not the world, into North America. <laughs> yeah, not the world. <laughs> yeah, about then. <laughs> yeah, so we've been, uh, us Australians who get it in a week's time, we're frantically ducking and weaving at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, well, I, I did the smart thing and I sat down and watched the second episode of um, His Dark Materials Ooh. to, like, help pass the MV, but, um, yeah. I haven't started I mean, we'll that, get it no, soon it enough. Good? It's just a painful week. Yeah. Mm. Like, it was one of my favourite series growing up and it's been a while yep. since I've read it, but, um, yeah, so far so good. I, um, I watched the movie and I didn't particularly like it. And then someone oh, God, I no. worked with no. who had the book, she's like, Duh, the, don't, don't, the movie, don't even look at it. It's no. not even like it's, yep. don't worry about it. So I think this is apparently yep. quite good for, it's much more close to the book. Yeah. And then like my favorite book is actually the second book. So I'm just waiting for like my favorite characters to turn up and everything. So. Oh, nice. Nice. You have to start yep. the, um, the dark materials podcast to go along with the, uh, Oh no, too the- many podcasts. <laughs> too, many, too many podcasts. Um, so before we, we 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 jump into things fully here, how's your um your ant- your rise to Skywalker anticipation going here? Last time we spoke, it was you know it was getting up there. We hadn't had the the second trailer or anything by then. But um, how are you feeling now that we're getting closer and closer? Uh, it is right up there. Actually, went and saw um Terminator yesterday. Oh yeah, I saw it last week. Which itself was, like, I've seen maybe, like, one of the other movies. So, it was an enjoyable movie, but, like, definitely, like, the best part of that was seeing the Rise of Skywalker trailer up on the big screen. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was Did they put the lights all the way down for yours? My, they didn't have the lights all the way yes. down. Oh, yeah. They was a bit annoyed because they showed it sort of early, yeah, earlier on the trailers. And I was like, oh, you know, put the house lights down, put the house lights down. But there was sort of oh, crazy no. detail in that that I thought I could see that, you, you don't get on the computer screen. Yeah. Well, actually, I got that trailer, and I also got a Jedi Fallen Order trailer, which I'm not excited oh. for it at all, but it was still cool to see that as well. Just yeah, well, a that, lot of Star Wars at the moment. Yeah, I know. Well, that comes out on Friday, and then oh, yeah. I don't know whether I'm going to have time to play it. I'm going down to, to my parents' house in the country, um, but my brother... He um, he said, I'll buy it and bring it down, then I can play it. I said, well, I'll do that, but I'm taking it home with me. If you think you can beat it in two days, you're welcome to borrow it until yeah, I... Yeah, good uh, luck. Until, yeah, good luck. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, so, have you got your tickets for Rise of Skywalker? I have. I... Oh, God. Yeah, because, like, we didn't... I remember that day we didn't know what time they were actually going to be dropping, especially, like, for us here in Australia. Yeah, there was just no... And... Yeah, there's nothing. So I walked out of my Tom Witch's appointment, checked if they were available, and they were, and I bought it straight away. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so I've a... got a reclining seat as well, so mm. I'm ready. Are you doing a midnight, or are you going sort of the morning or the oh, after yeah. day? You're doing uh, midnight? Yeah. Yeah, well, as it is, like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be working until 10 o'clock that night anyway, so like, there's no harm. Let it roll. Yeah, and like... The cinema is like two, oh, not two minutes, like five minutes away from home. So it's not like I'm going to be having like a big drive to get home afterwards. So <laughs> I'm all set. Uh, oh, nice. It's always, it feels good, doesn't it, to get them and just to know that you're yep. there. Yeah. It was, um, it was a similar boat where it was like sort of the, the Hoyts and Village, which are the ones down here in Melbourne. They were like, yeah, you know, tomorrow. And people were like, well, when? Like, tomorrow. I'm like, oh, <laughs> God damn. And, um, yeah, we, we, we're going to the midnight through the Star Walking fan club down here at Knox that we have before. But then I, I'm going uh, two days later, I'm taking my partner and my best mate and his family. So I had to sort of jump on as well. And I was the, like, I, I went in and went, oh no, all the seats are gone. And I went, oh no, actually none of the seats are taken. <laughs> I've got, I've got the oh, whole, no. I've got the pick of them. Cause it was like literally like you know, 30 seconds after the, and it was the Friday. Yeah. It wasn't the midnight. So, um, yeah, it feels good to have it. It, it feels, um, one less thing to worry about. 
Yeah, I just can't believe we're at this point, though. I know. Well, now with this world it's where just... the Mandalorian has, is a is a thing now, so somewhere right now while we're we're recording this, people are babbling on about the Mandalorian. <laughs> we're like keeping up with the times. We're not behind at all. No. Well, that's okay. Like we'll be yeah. we'll be with the times next week. The, in a week. A, in a week in Australia. Yeah. So. Wait, I'm going to a screening event here in in Melbourne, and um, oh nice! So we've got a, our friends through the Blue Panther Milk Matt and Sean have organised a private theatre with about thirty people, and we're going to sit down. We're going to watch the first two episodes, so we'll have the first two by then. Oh, so wow, which will be cool. Nice, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't go down like a lead balloon, or it'll be a bit awkward. But I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, from what little I saw before I muted all the words, people seemed pretty happy. So yeah, yeah, that's that's it's a good sign. It's a good sign. Now, yeah. let's not worry about these pesky Mandalorian. We're not here for Mandalorians. Whatever <laughs> you know, Disney Plus. We're here about the big, the big picture, the rise of Skywalker here. And um, now, the last couple of weeks on your your Twitter timeline, Holly, I've been seeing a lot of <laughs> twenty days till Resistance Reborn. 19 yeah. days to like you've been counting down this this book resistance reborn like ben hart from star wars underworld has been counting down rise of skywalker you you've been <laughs> all in on this on waiting for this book to to drop yeah so it, like i've always been a countdown person yeah like i remember baffling my school teachers when we had like we had little school diaries in primary school and even as like a 10 and 11 year old I'd be writing down like three months until Harry Potter and two months until Harry Potter <laughs> not, and it was, not, it was nice actually to like get back in that sort of like hype because I haven't been this hyped for a book since then since Harry Potter I was gonna say you're not writing yeah. hey three months till school holidays <laughs> you're just like no when this <laughs> I was the type of kid who enjoyed school so I would never have done <laughs> yeah, that like boo I'd have to go I want to stay away for- yeah Harry Potter I got yeah. into Harry Potter I'm definitely older than you I got into Harry Potter I think, well, I think maybe Order of the Phoenix was the first one where I went, ooh, it's coming. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'm by the time not, yeah, I got it, yep. I got onto it, I think it was sort of early 2000s, I went on holiday and a friend of mine had the books and I started reading them. And I'm pretty sure I got up to Goblet of Fire and then, like, Order of Phoenix was, like, a big thing. And I remember going with a friend and getting the books and, and like, and texting, going, like, oh, my God, they made, like, Ron a prefect or whatever. Or, you know, yeah. <laughs> for some reason, that one always stuck in my head. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that is. That's a pretty good pull if that is Order of the Phoenix, yeah, yeah. actually. There you go. So I'm talking to an expert. Yep. Um, and then the last couple, yeah, I mean, Deathly Hallows, I was in London for that. So oh, nice. that was quite cool. So I, although I don't... I, Remember, there were all these really big book launches and they couldn't do it at a certain time. And then, like, the yep. supermarket down the road was just selling it. And I just went down to the supermarket <laughs> and got it and, and read it. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, book hype. Nothing like a good book hype. So, was it just new Star Wars book? Or what, what was it about this one that was just sort of building the hype up for you? Well, I mean, like, being someone who came in because of the sequel trilogy. Yep. To actually, like, finally have a book centred around those characters was, like, just something I was really super excited for. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, finally... And then, like, the me. little hints... Yeah, and, like, then the little hints we got in the build-up just got me even more excited, and... Yeah, it was, like, this was a story I've been wanting since I saw The Force Awakens. Cool. Now, I... I'm going to get you to, to, to break it down for me. Now, I... You don't have to break. Obviously, you don't have to do page by page or anything like that. But I know I haven't read it. I I haven't done spoilers. But a lot of people have just said, you know, because I don't have time to read the books. I just, you know, I so a lot of characters and people that talk about, you know, things in Aftermath or Lost Stars or all this kind of stuff. These characters, I just got no idea who they are. And then they'll go, oh, Leia, I know Leia, and obviously I know the the movies and stuff. But I've I've read most of the comics, so I'm familiar with some of the characters. Um some more than others i suppose but um but then they started saying like oh this person turns up and this person turns up and this is you know all these sort of legacy characters as well so just give me the give me the general gist of what this book what this book's about we're talking post last jedi for one aren't we yeah like pretty much like it essentially so have you read the poe dameron comics yes yes yeah so it essentially like basically begins from where they ended like where poe goes to like reunite with black squadron and oh yeah because they kind of go missing on their own little mission don't they so they miss yeah. they they kind of miss all the once they blow up the star killer base they're off on their own little thing aren't they and then yeah yeah 
Yeah, so they're off doing their own little thing and like they get brought back into the picture and then so it's basically Poe like the whole story is essentially centered around Poe, you know, coming to terms with what he's done. As he's basically set, kind of not listening to orders and you know, get, putting yeah, his friends well, in danger and Yeah, like there was a whole like, he realises that he's made a huge mistake, and everyone else knows that he's made a huge mistake, but it's just sort of coming to terms with it and accepting that, you know, you can make these horrible mistakes and still be a good person. And, like, you're not you're not defined by your mistakes, sort of. Yep. So is that sort of... Does that relate to him taking on the Dreadnought and not listening to Leia, or is it more, you know, you... Tried, you didn't listen to Holdo, then you tried, went behind her back and you basically told the First Order inadvertently what we were up to and got a whole bunch of us blown uh, up. I feel like it's more like the initial Dreadnought stuff. Okay. But I feel like in general, just his approach everything in The Last Jedi. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, it's interesting, isn't he it? He just wasn't in a good headspace. He, he had no sleep. He was just... <laughs> You're already making excuses Yeah, for not him. in a good place. Now, before we get back into the plot here, I did see something online about a line where he sort of catches his own reflection or something like that, and he's quite happy about what he sees with his re- reflection. Is this is this true? Is this a thing that was really in there? Yeah, yeah so there are multiple comments about his hair and how excellent it is. Oh, wow, can't argue with that. From, like, multiple sources. <laughs> From multiple sources. And then, yeah, um, there's a point where... um. So, basically, one of the plot points involves him and Finn getting dressed up and going, like, undercover at some, like, fancy party. Oh, okay. And, yeah, so it's while he's, like, getting dressed up in this really nice suit and, like, slicking up his hair that he sees his own reflection. Ah, oh, and he's like, damn, when I'm out of the orange jumpsuit, I scrub up pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, it was just a really enjoyable recurring sort of, like, I wouldn't say plot point, but just recurring theme in the book was just, like, how good Poe looks. <laughs> well, and it, it's not a stretch, is it? I mean, obviously, Oscar Isaac no. is a very handsome man. So, um, okay, so so is Poe sort of, is the plot sort of built around, sort of stems around him and, and sort of Black Squadron? Are they sort of the driving forces that kind of veer oh. off? Or is that kind of where we kick off? Not, not as much. Like, it's definitely a central plot point but um i feel like there's sort of like several different arms to the story and you know poe's story is one of them um another one is actually a first order plot line okay um it it, it's not a huge one but it basically revolves around this one um this one guy who's sort of um made his way through the first order bureaucracy yeah and so he's not someone that we know sort of no no He's not someone that we know Horrifically already. Horrifically evil dude. Okay. Yeah. Um, and actually saw an interesting tweet today suggesting that maybe Matt Smith could be playing the guy in the movie. Okay, so it's not... Um, what's his face it's that Richard E. Grant's playing? It's not Pride. No, no, no. It's not Pride. It's some... Um, it's He's not particularly high level. He's a sort of mid-level okay. guy in the First Order. And he's essentially given this task of... um. So another arm of it is basically the first order is capturing people who, you know, are against them or have shown dissent against them. Okay. Yeah. So basically, and this includes like politicians and sports people and everything. Ah, uh, okay. So basically, and he's tasked with sort of looking after that. Right. Because the first order basically hit their stride. They've kind of like look. We've yeah. essentially we've we're running the galaxy. Does it kind of explain why everyone just rolls over? Does it, does everyone know that Star Killer Base is even blown up? Do they all just think Starkiller no. Base is still around? Like they see it, I, or is it just sort of? Does it really? They're just like we're on a roll here. We're just going to start moving in, pushing people around. Don't feel like that's really mentioned, but it's definitely um, because they again another spoiler. Um, the a resistance, spoiler like spoiler the main, away. yeah, <laughs> the main group of the resistance, like Leia and Rose and Ray and whatnot, they end up on Ryloth. Right. And, um, yeah, the approach there is definitely, well, in the case of Ryloth, they don't want to, you know, be shown to be supporting other side. Uh, but, um, in general, I feel like the approach to the First Order is definitely like, well, we can't be too against them because they'll come destroy us or like... Yeah, they're mad and they've yeah. got they've got a lot of military, so 
Yeah, like, if we want to protect <clears throat> our planet, we have to, like... Kind of roll over. Yeah, and, like, be... Or, like, just toe the right line and not displease them in any... Not give them a reason to attack us, sort of. So do people actually just assume that there is no resistance? Or do they even know that the resistance even really existed? Because it was sort of a Cold War, wasn't it? Like, the resistance wasn't yeah. really acknowledged. So they're just like, as far as we know, the government blew up and now the First Order have yep. moved in and that's it. It's not like there is a rebellion anywhere who's going to come in and sweep in and save us. We're kind of yeah. on our own. And, you know, those who do know that it exists are just like, well, you almost got destroyed, so... you got, like, ten people in one spaceship, so... Yeah. Okay. So people but, don't know about Ray or have any inkling about. Do, do they know about Luke Skywalker? Do they? Do they sort of? Does the sort of imply the <laughs> legend of Luke Skywalker? Or, or, or am I jumping ahead? Um, no, no. Well, funny <laughs> you bring up Luke. You were like, oh, like you had something quite juicy then, sort of. Because another arm of this whole plot is bringing Wedge and Tilly's into the story. Oh, right. Wedge is back. Now, I had heard rumours that he yes. was back because he turned up on a book cover in Spain or something like that. Um, yeah, he's definitely in the book. <laughs> and then they dropped his Black Series sort of conveniently at the same time as well. So Wedge, yep. <clears throat> I'm assuming, has just been in retirement for a while. and uh, Yeah, so he has been on the planet Akiva with Nora, who is Snap's mum. Oh, because they got together, I think, at the end of the last Aftermath book. So, yeah, but they basically are in this little, like, this little house with a few space chickens. Oh, just living and, you know, domestic Wedge is, bliss. He's ba- Wedge is basically a farmer, so... <laughs> he's like, I've, I've done blowing things up now. I'm just a, a man yep. of peace. A man of the land. Yeah. And then, you know, Snap and Kari come and um, essentially come to recruit the two of them. And they get the pleasure of um, telling Wedge what happened to Luke. Oh, right. Which was absolutely horrible. <laughs> so when was the... Maybe being the point at which I cried. <laughs> so oh, so does, does Wedge know that like Luke had been missing? Or does he just, like, last time I heard Luke was tra- training Jedis and that was that? Or has he just not heard anything for years about <laughs> Luke? Yeah, from what I remember, he he's purely just like... Oh, and what about Luke? Like, I don't... I'm not too sure if he knows if he's gone... Well, I'm assuming he probably knew that he'd gone missing because, I mean, it's Wedge. Yeah. And Leia was probably in contact with him. But um, he certainly didn't know that he'd died. Right. Right. Um, so w- what's the official line that they're saying? Are they saying Luke turned up at Crate and destroyed the First Order or stood them down and then was killed there? Or is it Luke projected himself onto a planet and fooled them and but he died on Akto or, or like are they just or are they just saying he died? Yeah, they're just saying he died, so Because it's interesting, isn't it? Because like they're kinda of going, does everybody yeah. know the full story or as far as like only Leia and Kylo know that he wasn't actually there. And then as far as everyone else is concerned, obviously Ray as well. Like no no yeah. like, Luke was there man. He faced him down and then he got we all got away, and then we assume he died after that. Yeah, because that's a good point. Because like the only people who were going to really know that he wasn't actually there were like Kylo, Leia, and Ray, and honestly, probably Finn, because Ray probably told him. But yeah, because that kind of d- negates the the legend a little bit, doesn't it? Because the whole point is like yeah. how he turns up and he does this amazing thing and, and faces them down and lets everyone escape. And I guess Kylo got got him. So that's interesting that they don't sort of say one way or the other. But um, yeah. Hmm. So poor Wedge gets delivered a bit of bad news. Yeah. It, it's a bit of a yeah. It hurts. But, so he's like um, the. So is, he, is he kind of like oh I'm the last one from that little r- ragtag bunch of dudes who blew up the Death Star? Like he would be the last one, wouldn't he? I, yeah. I, I assume so. Oh, uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, they bring in, like, the big thing of the book is, like, they bring in so many different characters, including, like, you know, other characters from, like, a, a few other characters from the Rebellion who I don't really recall because they're just not people I know. Yeah, yeah. So someone like General then, Raikin um, or, like, all these... Yeah, yeah he, he turns up. Yeah, right. That's a name of, like, that's a guy, if you watched Empire Strikes Back or a million times, you'd know, but it's like, hey, you know, if I'm coming at this yeah. point... That name means more to you than it means to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, they bring in characters from other stories. Obviously, you've got Black Squadron. And this book is actually really good for Cyrilinda. She has an absolutely fantastic storyline. Yeah, I'm not familiar with her. She must be... She, she's a book character, is she? No, no, she's in... 
Um, she's in the comic. She's the um journalist alien oh, lady. Oh, yep, 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 yep. yep, yep. yep. Got her. Yep. Yeah, she's absolutely fantastic. Oh. She actually um. So, basically, this book um kind of feeds the Finpo ship is quite well, oh, and no, there is I a was moment. Get to that. At. So yeah. hang on, let's just back let's just back the train up a little. Let's yeah. just back the ship up a little bit here, Holly, before we get any further. So <laughs> post last last Jedi ends, Finn and Rose have their little smoochie on the thing. He drags her back yep. off into the Falcon and takes care of her. Um, credits. Um, what is what what goes on there? Is it explored? Is it sort of they like give it a crack and nothing happens, or is it sort of um, not really implied one way or the other? I have described it as a one-two punch. In that, um, let me just find the quote that I do have. Oh wow, she's got notes. She's she's prepared. Yeah, <laughs> because so essentially, yeah, Poe gets given. So, like for context, Poe gets given, you know, orders to go to this party and basically has to get a list from this party. Like a guest and, list. Yeah. Well, it's actually a list of basically all the people at the First Order wanting to capture or have imprisoned already. Okay, gotcha. So, yes, yeah, Sir Alinda is going with another character, and then Poe, as a part of his invitation, also has, like, a plus one. Ah. So, yeah, he rocks up to the Falcon to go find Finn, and he finds Finn talking with Ray. Ray leaves, and then Poe's just like, oh, are the two of you together? And Finn's just like, no, we're just friends. And then Poe, for whatever reason, then also asks, what about you and Rose? And Finn says, we talked about it and Crate was a moment, but that's it. Friends there too. Wow. So they've, they've cleared the slate. Yeah. And I mean, like, of course, the movie can do whatever it wants. Yep. But my feeling is with the way this book has been pushed as the prequel to the movie... Yep. Or the prelude, like I feel like what this book does is pretty solid. They they're not gonna put Jana in there now after all this, surely. Like she's not you know what I mean? Like they're not gonna introduce yeah, another no. lady character just <laughs> just to to just to mess around with people after clearing like you say, like after clearing the decks of Rose and um and Ray. Um, mm. oh, poor Rose, though. Oh, well, I guess, you know, she could hang out with Dominic Monaghan there in that shot together in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... Um, Mary's Mary's not a bad step up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just, like, from a shipping point of view, I definitely expected Finn and Poe to be, like, dead and buried by now. But it just, it's the, it just keeps sort of... It's not... It would have been so easy to not... Exactly. Even go into or either one, not go into it, or even not categorically go. Oh no, Ray's just my friend, and Rose and I said, "Oh no, you know, it was the heat of the moment, and uh, and we've moved on." Yeah, like the fact that they made the point, the point of actually like clearly stating it, I find quite interesting. Wow. So was that? But yeah, I we'll see. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you know, like they just give you a little bit more, a little bit more. You know, it could have easily just been like, "Well, the book was good," but ah, oh, man, they killed that off for me. But now it's like, "Oh, the book was good," and hey, you know, the door the door is still still there. Um, okay, so let's get back to so we're post Last Jedi, the Resistance sort of focus around Poe and the pilots. So it, are they, is the resistance basically in rebuild mode? Is Leia just kind of like, all right, we, we've got to, we need pilots, we need people to train pilots, we need resources, we need a place to hang out. Are they sort of planning or is it more just, we've just got to stay together in the short term and worry about the bigger picture later? Uh, definitely, it's definitely more of like a planning. Like there are like multiple groups split off, like finding ships and finding you know, finding support and finding people to join the cause. Like, um, they bring in a few, like, there's a next imperial next imperial I think, you know, I think she was an ex imperial like, a few other pilots. Um, there's a point where they go, you know, to steal some ships and, you know, while, again, the resistance, the core resistance groups, group goes to Ryloth and tries to gain support there and... They're there for a while. Yep. And yeah, it's 
it's definitely more of a, you know, let's splinter off and see what we can find and then we'll rejoin when we can. So it's, is, it, is, it, is it sort of a sense of like, how do we like, how do we create a thing that's big enough to take on this first order now? Like how do we, you know, uh, yeah. we basically had this thing kind of going and we just got wiped out pretty quick and now we've got to essentially start from scratch. Um, yeah, essentially. So what, what's Ray up to in this? Is Ray being used as sort of like, hey, we've got a Jedi in our midst now, you should join us? Or is it sort of, is she just, is she sort of on that path still? Or is she more just concerned about the resistance side of things? Or is she sort of on the Jedi side of things as well? Like I know... She... Uh, I've seen some of the comics. Um, is it the Allegiance? No, what's the Allegiance? Yeah, yeah. where she's sort of she doesn't got a lightsaber yet or anything like that. She's sort of you know working on her skills and things. But um, I wasn't quite sure where that slotted in. I thought that came afterwards. Yeah, um, my understanding is Resistance Reborn sits before both Allegiance and Spark of the Resistance. Yep. Um, but yeah, as for this book, Ray isn't. She honestly isn't doing too much. Um, like, Poe is probably, like, the central character, and then Leia, and then a few others. So, yep, Ray isn't doing much, but um, I feel like, in general, she's, like, what we do see of her, she's fairly, I guess, sort of stressed and high-strung. <laughs> right, yeah. And, I mean, like, given what happened in The Last Jedi, I don't blame her. Yep. It's been like, and it's only like a week of her life too. So she's been through like the most, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, interesting. So what about Leia? Is she just kind of like this? Just the, the fight goes on, or is she just kind of going like, "Hey, man, like, how much more do you want to take from me?" I feel like both. Like she's really tired. Like you know, she almost died. Mm. But um, I mean, like it's very much well. I have to keep leading because if I don't, then what hope have we got? Yep. Like, it's kind of fallen onto me even more so now. There's no Luke. There's yeah. no... Yeah. Yeah, like, there's very clearly, like, a sort of build-up to a transition of power with Poe, but at the same time, a big part of the Resistance side of this story is finding people to become the leadership group of the Resistance. So, like, it's not just Leia's handing off power to Poe, it's she needs to find people who can be that core leadership group for the Resistance. Yeah. So does that automatically fall to the people who are kind of left, like your conixes and... No. Or is it just more like, no, we need some actual people with some experience around here, not just the girl on the radio? <laughs> yeah, like she's, yeah, bringing in uh, like a whole range of people, like recent, you know, people from, you know, back then and like newer people and it's like a true mix. Yep. It's not just whatever's left from, you know, what happened last time. So is the... There's the plot, like you said, it sort of goes off in three things. Is, is it sort of, is there an overarching kind of like mission that drives the story or is it more just a, a, a sort of a story that just builds of kind of, you know, the thing, things are sort of just happening, to getting towards a certain point? Is it just, is it sort of like a, I'm not quite sure the word I'm looking for here, but it's like a sort of, uh, I don't know, like a continual sort of mission or something like that that they're, that they're moving towards or... Yeah. I feel like it's sort of like, this might be a weird description, but sort of like a diamond shape, like all the things begin at the same, the, like the story begins at the same point and then it sort of splinters off into a th- few different stories. Yep. But then they autom- automatically come, not automatically, but they all just kind of go end back up to at the, the central place. point by the end. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like by the end of it, you know, they've found a new hideout and, you know, they're all coming together before they, you know, splinter off again to go f- mine to go find more support and more ships. Okay, so it's certainly not. It's just like getting up to this point where they can, you know, really grow the resistance again. Yeah. So it sort of becomes sort of viable again, basically. Yeah, essentially. So, is there any sort of um, any sort of uh, insight into like why nobody came when Leia asked for help? Is it sort of acknowledged or are people just too chicken or is he just like, hey, um, I'm going to go call some names and find out, you know, wh- where you all were? Or is she just like, oh, look, I don't blame you? Well, part of it's definitely put towards, again, like the fact that the First Order has this list of people it wants to, like, that it's keeping an eye on and that it wants to capture and imprison because, like, that list of, like, especially people in prison includes, like, again, politicians and people who have shown support for the resistance. So, yeah. understandably, if they've been captured, they're not going to be able to, 
you know, reply to Leia. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that, yeah, does, that does help explain why, partly why there was no reply. Interesting. So let's let's flip over to First Order. Um, Kylo's the man in charge. Do we get much Kylo in charge or is it sort of like nope. it's sort of spoken about like, hey, I think Kylo Ren's in charge of things now. Like is it sort of like the, the aftermath of Literally. Snoke being chopped in half? <laughs> like do they all buy it? All we it? get, no, all we get of the of um, the First Order is, again, this, you know, side plot with this bureaucrat and... Like, there's one passage where Leia and Ray talk about Kylo, and that's about it. Oh, right. Like, it's not a central... It's very much focused on the Resistance. So, what's that conversation like? Is it like, well, I went to speak to him, but he was, you know, he was a dick, but he killed... Does she actually say, like, he he killed Snoke, and I thought everything was going to be cool, and Um, then he... I honestly don't remember it too well, (laughs) but... Sorry, I'm just asking um, all these, like, minute details. (laughs) No... No, my brain got very focused on a few particular points of this it book. It sounds but, like um, there was a couple you got very focused on there, Holly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it was definitely like, um, you know, if, like, he has to want to be, he has to want to be better. Like, like he, no amount of, like, if he's going to, you know, come back. Yeah. Yeah. If he's going to come back to the light side, he has to do it himself. He has to want to do it. And I don't feel like he's going to do it. That was essentially their conversation. Oh, yeah, it doesn't bode well for all. Yeah, Kylo. it was interesting. No, <laughs> but yeah, it was. Um, yeah, we don't hear much from him, and that. I mean, like that pleases me because I don't. I find him to be a good villain, and a very like timely villain. But I mean, like he's just not my favorite character within the sequel trilogy. Yeah, fair enough. At all. Well, no wonder you like the book so much then. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So Wedge comes in. So Poe and they the, they get the pilots together. So I'm assuming Wedge is coming in to, is it to train or are they getting him to fly or what, whatever he wants to do, you can um, do. Yeah, he was... Oh, God, what were they doing? <laughs> My brain has had a great time. <laughs> um, no, here they... Um, Essentially, go if I'm remembering quickly correctly to um to get some more ships. Yep. And they end up rescuing a few of the prisoners from memory. Okay. Okay. So essentially, you know, the prisoners are you know more support for the resistance yep. if they want to be. Yeah. So basically, people of influence who can help sort of swell the numbers quickly and you know yeah rally the rally the galaxy. And- yeah, and like Wedge is a good figurehead for the resistance. Although by the end of the book, he's just like, "No, we have to, you know, leave." And like he kind of steps back a bit. Oh right, so he kind of does a bit, but it's just like, "Oh look, I I can't get back into this fight again. I've had enough. I could get back to oh, my chickens." I think it's more he he's off to go do his own thing for the resistance. Oh like okay, sticking around. Yep. Although again, my yeah memory is a bit hazy of that bit, but yeah. He steps back again. Okay. But um, it'd be, I'll be interested to see if we see him in the movie. Yeah. I, I, I feel like you know, they're bringing all these other people back. Do we get any Lando? Is there any any hints of No, of that the two big, I guess, emissions for me were Lando and then Kez Poe's father, who I kind of expected to turn up. Ah. But yeah, no, no sign of Lando, so... The explanation for how he ends up in the movie will have to, you know, obviously be within the movie. Is this the last... Now, is this the last big bit of pre-Rise Rise of Skywalker story we're getting before the movie? There's no other book or comic yeah, coming? Yeah, nothing Like, else. this is pretty much... Once this is done, like, find out what happens in the film. Yeah. I feel like all we've got from now is, um, I mean, potentially something in, like, Resistance, but... um. Yeah. They feel like they're kind of I treading water a little like... bit, Resistance. I think they... Mm. You know, I'm enjoying Resistance, but they're obviously waiting for yeah. something. You know what I mean? Like, I think that once Rise of Skywalker yeah. comes out, they'll be like, "We've got to get to Thingy and help," and they'll be, you know, they'll they'll like the 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 Resistance season one really soared when it crossed Force Awakens, and then it was like, "Oh wow!" Yes. You know, and the best bits yep. of Resistance this series have been, you know, they've gotten to um, uh, the Ilenium system, and they see that the you know the planet's been blown up and stuff like that. That was always the it's like, oh, that's what's happening. So I think that'll be the bits. I think that right, it'll resistance will sort of fly. Up. So there's no no mention of anybody from resistance. I assume. 
No, there is mention though of people from Battlefront Two. Oh, um, um, Say and Shriv, who I'm not like I don't know at all, but the book did make me quite enjoy them. No, I think that's the lady's daughter, the main character's daughter yes. from Battlefront, and then the other guy is the he's kind of the wise cracking. I don't know the alien off the top of my head. Um, yeah, yeah, the blue guy. Yeah, the blue guy. Yeah, he's very good in the in the um, in the game. Yeah, just what, go to YouTube, watch the cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> that'll give yeah, you... I, I tried playing the game and I got about five minutes in and just <laughs> wasn't very good at it, so I gave up. You got shot in the head. Yeah, it happens. Happens to the best yeah. of us. Um, Too much. Cool. Well, it's good to see that they're still kicking around then. Yeah, because the, sto- the Battlefront yeah. story basically is post-Return of the Jedi and then there's a bonus level where it jumps forward in time to pretty much Force Awakens time and it's um, her daughter and, yeah. The blue dude, <laughs> as you're saying. Um, okay, I'm just trying to think of what else we haven't covered here. Is there? Is there? What, what's what's some big stuff that? You, is there anything big that you haven't um, you haven't dropped on me yet? Um, no. It's just I feel like the big stuff is like there is a lot of Finn and Poe moments. Yeah. Um, going back, uh, Sarah Linda definitely. I feel like Sarah Linda knows that Poe has a giant crush on Finn, even though, like, obviously that's not, ca- like, that's not hard canon, but Sarah Linda definitely gives us a sort of vibe that she knows that he does. Oh, right. Like, so it's actually really it was an interesting, on Front Street. Yeah, and then she um, proceeds to make a shoe size joke. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. I had to, like... I read it and I'm just like, wait, was that in the Star Wars book? Oh my yeah, goodness! It, it was. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a surprise. So you're looking for someone to high five as when that happens, like that, like you just sort of like looking around and. I just couldn't believe it was actually in the Star Wars book. <laughs> <laughs> like they snuck it in there. I didn't say like they snuck it in. I think it was it was like right there, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. Um. Yep. Wow, that's interesting because I know I've got um, a friend of mine who's been on the pod, um, King Tom Chansky. Hi, Tom, if you're listening. He he does a similar sort of podcast with uh, Steel from Steel Wars where he sort of lays out the books and things. And Tom's really old school law. You know what I mean? Like he's very, you know, he's a lot about the you know, stuff about the new stuff, but he would have been reading the book in a different way going, you know, when they're dropping in people yeah. like General Raikin, he'd be like, oh, and this person, this person, this person. But, you know, I, he had a very similar, like he said the book was great. Um, it's just really interesting, you know, that you're you know, you're sort of a, a, a new fan pulling all the new all the new stuff as the stuff that really gets you. And I'm sure I haven't listened to his review yet because I wanted to be have no spoilers when we were going to talk. But he, I'm sure he'll be going, oh, and then this person from the you know episode four who was in the background turned up and did this and did yeah. this. <laughs> I wonder if yeah, he'll say anything thing... about true size. <laughs> like well, the one thing I did appreciate appreciate about the book, you know, outside of, like, the stuff I knew I was going to like, was the fact that it made me actually really like Wedge. Like, I didn't not... I didn't dislike him before the book, but I just didn't particularly care for him. Or just be like, he's in the movies and whatever after that, don't really mind. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, but, yeah, this book, like, actively made me like him. He's a funny one, Wedge, because he's sort of... He has no business being... Who he? How do I put this? The character is just weird. That like that he is even sort of sac- like he, he he makes it through a new hope for some particular reason. When everybody else gets blown up and he kind of gets hit and he gets he pulls out and they actually take the time in the film to be like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And he pulls away and but you know everybody else on that run except Luke gets blown up pretty much. But for some reason they spare yeah. Wedge, and then he turns up in Empire and then he turns up in Return of the Jedi and it just. It's just weird that for whatever reason that, that character is, is sort of exists. We could have just been like random pilot number three who got blown up. Yeah, yeah. And now he's got yeah, all no, this he, weight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, but um, there's a. So obviously, you know, he marries or gets together with Snap's mother, and although I haven't finished Last Aftermath book, my understanding is that Snap isn't a huge fan of that at that point. Oh, he's like, "What are you doing but with my mum?" Yeah, because, like, Snap's relationship with his mum is a whole other very messy thing. 
and they, then like his relationship with his dad as well is a whole oh, other thing. But Greg, then Greg Grunberg is such a sweet... nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the aftermath really provides a good insight into, into Snap's like earlier life. Uh, that okay. this book has a very sweet moment towards the end where is a Snap calls Wedge Dad. Yeah, no, Snap calls Wedge Dad, and they have all this like this big, lovely family moment. Aww. And it's just really sweet, because it's not something that you see that often in Star Wars. Yep, yeah, usually it's... Like an actual happy family. <laughs> I was going to say, usually it's families not getting along, <laughs> having a few issues, yeah, or, like nobody's, was... or nobody knows where their family is. Yeah, and it's really sweet, because, you know, they have that moment, and then the story... Because this is, like, right at the end. They they have that sweet family moment, and then we kind of move back towards Poe. And then Finn, and then Ray, and then they have this really sweet sort of family moment where, um, you know, they're talking about what they're going to do next. Yep. And, you know, oh, Poe's just like, oh, to Finn, he's just like, oh, you, you're going to join me? And he's just like, of course. And then Ray turns up, and they catch Leia looking at them. And she's sort of, like, proud and of I the, think, the new team. Yeah, because she gives them this look. And they talk about how, you know, Leia knows they're going to be okay because they've got them. Yep. And it really solidifies them, not only as a trio, but sort of as a family, which I really appreciate. Mm. Yeah. Like, they're each other's family, and I can't wait for the movie to sort of dig a bit more into that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it, it's There's a lot of sort of surrogate families. and Like you're saying about families always at each other's throats in Star Wars, and there's always yeah. you know, people find new families. I... People sort of say to me, like, what would you like to see? If Like, if you were doing a Star Wars, what would you do? And I would, I'd be like, I'd like to do a family, like a story around a family mm-hmm. that actually have an adventure as a family. You know what I mean? Like, rather than, like, oh, yeah. someone that, you know, it's always like, I think the closest is, like, Caravan of Courage. I don't know if you've ever seen those Ewok movies. But no. then they get separated and, you know, that something happened, bad happens to them. It's always something bad. Like, it's never sort of like... yeah. A functioning family doing going on an adventure. They've never really done that before. But um, so, where's Chewie in all of this? Um, he he's hanging around with like that main resistance group. Yep. Um, again, we don't see too much of him, but he's a. Does the Falcon play any part in it, or is it just sort of being used to get from point A to point B? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's just the resistance taxi. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like um. Oh, you know how, like, you know, soccer mums have those big vans and they'll call it, like, mum's taxi? Yeah. It's just Chewie's like that's, taxi. That's a Falcon at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, uh all He right. just has a sticker being, like, Chewie's taxi. Yeah, he's got that sticker with all the family members on the back, but it's got, like, Ray and P- Finn and Poe and Leia, those, you know, the little family stickers on the back of the Falcon. Yeah. He's like, where do you want to go? I've got to drop Ray off here and then I've got to double back and get, you know, Finn from swimming lessons and I've got to go back and pick up Poe <laughs> and do this and... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, in the wash up, like uh, of this book, you know, wh- where do we find our our heroes? Where do we? What's the state of the galaxy? Galaxy at the end of this book. So it's essentially they've found this sort of safe spot with this help of this mysterious group, who you know isn't really attached to one side, but doesn't like the first order, so. So yeah, they've got this special hideout. They've brought in a few of these um, prisoners, one of whom includes a character who was introduced in the book Bloodline. Okay. Um, it's one of Leia's um, acquaintances. Um, so yeah, they, they, they get these prisoners, they bring them to the safe spot, um, and the resistance as it is kind of regroups for this short time. And then from that point, it's definitely the air of like, Sure, we'll hang around here for a bit. We'll, you know, recuperate, rest. And then as soon as we're good to go, we're going to split off again and continue this fight and continue growing so that we can actually take on the First Order. Right. And obviously bring us to the point that is the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Well, I I just... I I know so little about the Rise of Skywalker. I don't read spoilers. I don't really know what the state of the galaxy is or anything like that. Like... I am kind of wondering about going, is it just them amassing a mass of people against another mass of people? And obviously the the Ray and Kylo stuff plays out on a much more personal level. But, you know, how much yeah. how much of a victory is 
and I suppose it's similar to Return of the Jedi. You know, the, the victory is partially the Alliance blowing up the Death Star and partially Luke and you know overcoming the Emperor and things. And you know, how does Palpatine figure into all of this? I'm assuming there's no sniff yeah. of Palpatine in this book at all. No, not a sniff. But that you bring that up, you bring up how like we don't know much about the movie and like I was looking back at my tweets from like two years ago, so I've seen the lead up to The Last Jedi. And I think at this point you might have had like TV spots or something. Because mm-hmm. I was tweeting about them and we we knew so much more than what we do at the moment because I feel like right now we know pretty much nothing. Yeah, I guess it's the time. Like the trailers didn't show much and like I loved the second trailer because it didn't tell us much. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. But we still know nothing. It's funny because Last Jedi obviously took so many twists and turns and you know a lot of the reasons yeah. that people have issues with it, I think, is because because it takes place right after Force Awakens. So many people just assumed they knew what was going to happen in that film because like, well, it has to go like this. Yes. It's going to go like this. And ultimately it didn't. But at the same time, it's like, well, we know Ray's training with Luke. You know, we know this stuff. We, th- there were things that we knew. Um, this is just so open. Like... Um, yeah, the book obviously doesn't give us any more insight apart from, you know, the resistance is, is going from a, a, a you know pretty much spent force to, to building towards something, um, and it's interesting that you said you know by the time the book ends, um, and this is kind of the last bit of real information we've got, you you know, you're not anymore, you know, you, the journey is great, but it's not as if you go like oh I know something that other people don't don't know going into this movie. Yeah, like the only. Like, it definitely added to the story, and it's, like, it's probably my favourite Star Wars book at the moment, but in terms of informing us about what happens in the movie, I don't feel like it adds anything really too substantial or spoilery. I mean, the only thing you could really argue is spoilery is, I guess, like, the relationship stuff. Yep. But that is so, you know, comparatively minor that... Yeah, it barely counts at this point. So it's obviously up the stakes for you as, as, as in your ship here. So does it <laughs> does it make it more of a bummer if it's not acknowledged in the film or are you just kind of like, hey, I got a little bit more than I thought I would? Does it need to be spoken even more explicitly or almost like, hey, I mean, I know you obviously you much prefer these things to be played on on screen. That's kind of where they've, they've yeah. probably chickened out really. But um you know, it's kind of like, oh, it's even worse if you, <laughs> you know, it's even worse if you sh- you give me more or give me more reason to think so and then basically don't yeah, go through it's, with it. it's difficult because I feel like if all things were equal in terms of, like, representation, then what we got in the book would maybe feel like build up. Yeah. I mean, the reality is something. that, you know, until you read this book, people would have gone, oh, well, it won't be surprising if, Finn and Rosa together because they kissed in yeah. the last film. You know what I mean? Like, and then they've just gone, no, 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 that doesn't mean anything anymore. But the expectation for a lot of people would just be, well, obviously they'd be together because they kissed in the last movie. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting because I've seen like a few people who, you know, aren't necessarily shippers or like big shippers be like, oh, like I feel like they could maybe go this route now. Mm. So, yeah, I just, I don't know. Obviously, don't want to get my hopes up, but also just don't know at this point, like, because we still don't know what role Sorry Bliss has in all of this. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of implied that she's like an, an ex-girlfriend or, or, or got a history with yeah. Poe, but that doesn't necessarily mean I anything, I just feel does like it? they could be, pl- yeah, could they could be that, playing that up just, It could I be mean, like, like a they know, and Han thing where, you know, yeah. Poe fucked her over or something, you know, or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, like, like, they know how to stir us up, like. Oh yeah. yeah oh I look, I sat in that episode like, nine panel. Like, you know, John Boyega yeah. and Oscar Isaac were just absolutely milking it for every, you know, <laughs> everything yeah. it was worth. Like, I feel like we might be able to get a bit more of a gauge of how things go on that front in the coming weeks when like press starts up. Yep. But ultimately, we're not going to know until we sit in the theater and see the movie. Yeah, you'll you'll know. You'll be in your your comfy recliner. And, um, yep. you know, it, I think there's just going to be so much, so much to take in in this film. I just feel like it's going to lurch from one sort of, oh my God, to the next, oh my God, there's just going to be so much stuff going on that, you know, obviously it, it, if something like that 
happens, it's not like you wouldn't see it or you'd miss it, but you'll go, oh my goodness, and then like something else and then something else. It just feels like they're just, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at this one. Yeah, well, I, re- I think a quote from JJ popped up today or yesterday about how he's not, God, I didn't know what he said, but he's like not afraid. He's not going to like stick to a certain formula or he's not afraid to like go all out and do something different. Yep. With this movie. And why not? <laughs> like- yeah, I mean, like, yeah. So, like, I don't. I think there's, of course, definitely going to be things we don't expect to happen. It's just, like, honestly, even at this point, I still don't know what to think at all about this movie. Like, I'm definitely excited and I. I think I'm going to love it, but I just, I don't know what to expect. Yeah. And I kind I, of love that. Yeah, I feel the exact same Like, it's same part way. of the enjoyment. But at the same time, I feel like I know enough. Like, I don't need to know. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of glad that, that you know, the, the way that you described the book was, you know, all this stuff sort of happened. It was really good with the characters and what happened and it made sense and it led up and all this kind of thing. But at the same time, I'm, we're still at a point where it doesn't, give me any crazy insight into what's going to happen in the movie. And like I said, I've read the comics and things and, you know, they're kind of on a trash planet hanging out trying to round up support. And, um, you know, it sounds like the the, the the comic I thought was okay. I didn't think it was, it was good and bad in bits. Yeah, it was, but... didn't write Finn particularly well. Sorry? They... Uh, the comic didn't do Finn well at all. So Yeah, yeah. I, I, I... Which is frustrating. But, um, you know... Now we, we we get closer and closer to this thing, and and the book's a good companion to it. So, is there? Oh yeah, definitely. Is there another book? What's the next Star Wars book after this? Are they? Is this? Is this it? Are they even announced anything? Or is it all wait till um, the movie comes out and then we? Well, like technically within the canon timeline, again, Spark of the Resistance exists after this book, but as a YA novel. Yeah. I don't think. Like, its relationship, like, of course it's a canon novel, but... It's not going to be too I feel like Resistance Reborn is more like the premier can- like canon novel and, like, Spark of the Resistance maybe sits on, like, a lower plane. Yeah. Like, and it just, yeah, again, being a YA novel, it's not as in-depth and it's got a fun little story, but it's just not as important, ultimately. Well, you can't. Uh, they can't all be uh, dropping shoe sizes and you know everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just a great lead in and build up to the movie. Yeah. Like it definitely made me more excited, and I didn't think that was possible. Oh, look, I'd seen. I'd obviously tried to avoid the details because I knew we were going to chat about it. But pretty much everybody I saw absolutely raved about the book, and I just. It's one of those things where you know I don't read the books because I have no time, and I wish. You know, I'm, I could make time to, to read this one, but luckily I had you to come in and, and fill me in. So thank you so much for doing that. Not a problem. It was a pleasure. <laughs> it seemed like you were pretty keen to keep chatting about it too. So I'm glad that it wasn't, yeah. you know, I wouldn't have, if you'd hated it, I wouldn't have made you come on and talk about how much you hated it. <laughs> There's plenty of people on the internet who talk about what they hate and, you know, what, what fun yep. is that really? Um, exactly. So... Plug away on the podcast. How's how's the pod going? Are you doing a sort of a lead on to to nine here, or um, we're, we're trying our best. It's a bit difficult with like different time zones and like yep. just living in different parts of the world. But yeah, we're trying. We just recorded our Resistance Reborn recap episode early today. Well, there you go. Listen to that first, um, and then yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, we're, we're trying to keep up with Resistance, but it's honestly kind of hard with like all the other stuff coming. Yep. Like, with The Mandalorian and The Rise of Skywalker, and it's just so much at the moment. Yeah, it's... But yeah, we're, we're trying our best. It's it's getting very, like, oh, I've just really got to plan out time to do things. I've actually had to say no to one or two things because I just don't have time to do it, and which is ri- ridiculous yeah. to think that I wouldn't have time for Star Wars, but I've had to go, oh, I've got to do this, <laughs> and then I don't have time to do that. And, you know, you only get so many evenings to do, especially with little kids and things as well. So I have to see yeah, my yeah. family sometimes. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell everybody that about your podcast, where they can find you, where they can find all these yes. things and get a get a get um, you know, some more info about how you felt about the book, probably more than me asking yes. stupid questions. 
So yeah, my podcast my podcast again is Rebel Dispatch, and we can be found on Twitter at Rebel Dis um at sorry at underscore Rebel Dispatch, and I can also be found on Twitter at underscore Holly Tweets, and I basically just talk a lot about well the book at the moment, and just like career representation and just how much I love Finn. Yeah. Nice. I'm still hanging out for that um, Poe in the Scarf Black series as well too. If we don't get it at some point, I will be greatly disappointed. <laughs> I reckon next wave. I just need. I think it's going to be yeah. soon, surely. It has to come, surely, because they'll sell. If they do the face well, I know they'll sell the, um, really well. The vintage figure one got better, but it wasn't perfect. But the Ray Black series face was fantastic. So I, I can't see any reason why they can't do Oscar Isaac some justice. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> justice for Poe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so uh, much again. Uh, you can find our stuff at starwarsspeltout.com. Um, we've got t shirts and all that kind of stuff on T Public. And I think that's about it. So, yeah, thanks again, Holly. Thank you so much for, uh, no, for thank filling you for me, me in. Absolute pleasure. And we'll have <laughs> you on um, post Rise of Skywalker and we'll see whether yes, we well, all get what we want. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> thanks again. <laughs> see you later. Thank you. Bye.